Hi students, welcome to Sunil's tutorial. I'm Sunil Mirani and today we'll be doing this chapter called as wave motion. We are going to see how the fraction of light takes place using Huygens principle. Right? Let's consider a refracting surface. Right? Let's assume that XY is my refracting surface. Right? <coughs> Let's consider a plane wavefront. This is my plane wavefront. So let's assume that AB is my plane wavefront. Right? Rays of light will start from say P and reach A and from Q and will reach B. Right? Rays of light will start from P and will reach A, will start from Q and will reach B. Now let us assume that the velocity of light in medium 1 is C1 and velocity of light in medium 2 is C2. Right? Now point A is on the refracting surface. So once the ray of light reaches point A, it is going to get refracted and it will move in the other medium. So by the time the ray of light reaches from B to C, this would have covered a distance here. Right? This would have covered a distance here. Let's assume that this is my normal. Let's assume that M N is the normal. So by the time B reaches point C, by the time B reaches point C, A would have reached point D. A would have reached point D. Right? Do we get this thing here? Yeah. Now, Obviously this distance is going to be different because the velocity of light is not same in both the medium. Right? So in that case this is going to be my refracted medium. This is going to be my refracted wavefront and then this ray of light will move out this way. Right? So you would have refraction taking place this way. Right? Where this is going to be my angle of incidence and this is going to be my angle of refraction this is also my angle of incidence right that's the angle of incidence of the ray that's the angle of incidence of the plane wavefront both of which are going to be same and here I'm going to have angle of refraction again right so do we understand how refraction takes place you have a plane wavefront AB rays of light start from P and reach A in the meantime, rays of light start from Q and reach B. By the time rays of light move from A to D, rays of light have moved, ray of light has moved from B to C. Right? It, here it covers, let's assume in time interval T, this will cover a distance of C1 T. Distance is velocity into time and A D will be C2 T. Right? So by the time B covers a distance of C1 T in that same time interval. A would have covered a distance of C to T, right? If I join that, that will give you your refracted wavefront, right? Can we write this much down, please, quickly? Let's assume that XY is the refracting surface, right? Let us assume that AB is a plane wavefront. Let's consider that rays you have let us consider that the PA and QB are incident or incident or in air on surface in air on surface XY right now we have said that AB is the wavefront. Now the wavefront AB will first reach point A. Right? Once it reaches point A on the surface XY. On the surface XY sorry. And then it will successively reach uh, 
then we will successively reach the point from A to C and then it will successively reach from A to C. So first point A is going to touch the refracting surface. Now <coughs> At the instant when point A touches the refracting surface, by Eugen's theory, it becomes a secondary source. Eugen's theory says that once you have a wavefront, every point on the wavefront acts as a secondary source of light. So at the instant, at the instant, the wavefront reaches point A. Point A becomes the secondary source Point A becomes the secondary source, the source and starts emitting secondary waves and starts emitting secondary waves Right? Once you have this, you can say let us assume that C1 and C2 are velocities of light in medium 1 and 2. Right? In that case, I can say that the incident wavefront will move from B to C. In time t, let us assume that the incident wavefront <coughs> moves from B to C in time t, time t and covers a distance of C1 t, right? In the meantime, in that same time interval t, a would have reached point b in time t. Secondary waves from a will cover a distance in time t. Secondary waves from a will cover a distance. of C2T right and the refracted uh, secondary wave from A would have reached point B the refracted secondary wave from A would have reached point would have reached point B. Therefore, I can say that point C and point D are in the same phase and hence CD represents the refracted wavefront. Hence, point C and D are in the same phase. And CD represents the refracted wavefront. Right? Now, once you have this, now uh, let's also assume that uh, in that case you could have rays going parallel to this. So I will have uh, join AB to produce S and C to draw CR. Let's assume that this is my S and this is my R. Okay. Now, in that case, I can say that let Mn be the normal. Let us assume that Mn is normal. So, angle, I can say that angle PAM is my angle of incidence and angle DAN 
is my angle of refraction okay in which case i can therefore say that angle dac will also be equal to my angle of incidence and angle acd will also be my angle of refraction right do we get this thing clear now once you have this what is sin i in triangle let's consider in triangle bac in triangle bac what is sin i sin is nothing but opposite upon hypo opposite is nothing but bc upon ac bc upon ac and bc we have already found out is nothing but c1t upon ac so sin i is going to be nothing but c1t upon ac right and similarly in triangle in triangle acd what will be sin r sin r will be nothing but ad upon ac sin r is going to be nothing but ad upon ac right so in that case i can say that sin r is c to d c to t upon ac but by snell's law we know that refractor index is nothing but sin i upon sin r i can say let's first find out what is sin i upon sin r sin i is going to be c1 t upon ac divided by c2 t upon ac 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 gets cancelled t and t gets cancelled so i get sin i upon sin r is c1 upon c2 right thus we get but sin i upon sin r is nothing but refractive index thus you come to know that refractive index is nothing but c1 upon c2 that is velocity of light in air upon velocity of light in medium fine do we get this thing here this is how you prove refraction using huygens principle fine do we get this thing here now let's come to another concept called as polarization <coughs> now let's first consider let's first consider ordinary light let us first consider ordinary light this is how ordinary light moves right if ordinary light is going into the board if this is the point where the ordinary light is moving at this is how it is going to cause disturbance in air particle and ordinary light is going to cause disturbance in air particle in all directions and ordinary light would cause disturbance in air particle in all the directions this is how my ordinary light would look like now let's assume that i pass this light through a slit i pass this light light through a slit and on the other end I have a suppose if I connect a string. Let's explain this to you with the help of a string. This is my string. Now a string is allowed to vibrate in all directions. If the string is in my hand, the other end of the string I'm going to keep it fixed at the other point. Say, let's consider that this is point A, this is point B, right? I could move the string in any direction. If one end of the string is in my hand, I can move it in any of the direction. horizontal vertical or at any angular direction but when i move the string you would have a wave created and when the wave has to pass through this slit it has to pass only in the direction of the slit when it is going to if i move the wave in horizontal direction 
then the wave will not pass through the slit without a reduction in its amplitude. The wave will be able to pass through the slit. The wave will be able to pass through the slit without a reduction in its amplitude only when I move it in vertical direction. If I move it in horizontal direction, slit since the width of the slit is very narrow, the amplitude is going to get buffered out and you will have no amplitude pass passing through. This is your ordinary light and this is your plane polarized light. And this effect is called as polarization. What is polarization? Polarization is an effect wherein the light instead of moving in multiple planes is going to move only in one plane. Right? How do I know that you know the light has been polarized? Suppose if I keep another you know, suppose if I keep another slit at this end. Suppose if I do this experiment this way. Slit that is kept at this end. Let's keep this slit this way. Right? Now if I have light, it can be it can move in any direction. You have light that could move in any direction. If I pass this through this slit in horizontal direction, it will be able to pass through without a reduction in its amplitude, right? But when I when this ray of light reaches here, will it be able to pass through this slit without any reduction in its amplitude? No, because the width of the slit is very small. It will be able to pass through without a reduction in its amplitude only in the vertical plane not in the horizontal plane. So as a result, what I will get at the other end is going to be just a straight line. Right? I would have no wave reaching point B. Do you understand this? So do you understand the concept of polarization? Instead of having uh, vibrations in all the planes, I am going to make sure that there are vibrations only in one plane. This wave, which has vibration only in one plane, is called as plane polarized light. This light or this uh, vibration, where this point, at this point, where the vibrations are in all the planes, is called as unpolarized light. And this slit, which changes the vibration from all planes to a particular plane, is called as a polarizer. So, do you understand? So, in polarization, you have three concepts. One, the unpolarized light the polarizer and the polarized light. Fine, do you understand this? So, what is, uh, what do we understand by polarization? It is a phenomena due to which vibrations of light are restricted to a particular plane. A phenomena in which the vibrations of light are restricted to a particular plane is called as polarization of light. Fine, do we get this thing here? So, how do I define polarization? The phenomena due to which vibrations of light are restricted to a particular plane is called polarization of light. Right? Do you understand concept of polarization? Polarization of light is a concept wherein you restrict the vibrations of light to a particular plane, right? Now, if you understood the concept of polarization, can you tell me that will polarization occur in both the forms of light? That means, will it occur in transverse wave as well as longitudinal wave? See the question that uh, polarization occurs in dash wave, transverse wave, longitudinal wave, which both 
none you have a question like this it will occur if you have understood this concept what is polarization based on why is it that polarization took place here because it was the amplitude could pass through a particular plane now in which form of light is the amplitude important only in transverse wave so in a transverse wave polarization of light is possible polarization of light takes place in a transverse wave why because that depends upon the amplitude in a longitudinal wave it is purely based on frequency right do you get this thing clear now in this case if you look at this first slit if i have this was the light unpolarized light which was moving in all directions which could have vibrations in all direction now after passing through this slit the vibrations are going to be in a particular direction so this particular plane in which the vibrations are going to be there is called as your plane of polarization what is plane of polarization it is a plane in which vibrations would ex exist after the light is polarized once i polarize the light vibrations would exist in a particular plane and that plane in which they exist is called as plane of polarization or sorry that is called as plane of vibration not polarization my mistake that is called as plane of vibration the plane which is perpendicular to the plane of vibration is called as plane of polarization so you have two planes this is going to be your plane of vibration and this is going to be your plane of polarization right so when polarization of light takes place there are two concepts one will be the plane of vibration in which the vibrations would exist and the plane which is perpendicular to that is called as your plane of polarization fine do we get this thing clear now in that case from this discussion what do we understand about polarization let's try to sum this up if i were to try to sum this up what is polarization or what is a plane polarized light a plane polarized light how do i uh, explain a plane polarized light or what are the characteristics of a plane polarized light <coughs> a plane polarized light is the one in which vibrations are restricted to a particular transverse plane only vibrations are restricted to a particular transverse plane only <coughs> right you have vibrations in a particular plane only the plane of vibration the plane in which vibrations occur is known as the plane of vibration the plane in which vibrations occur is known as the plane of vibration <coughs> right next the plane which is at right angle to the plane of vibration is known as your plane of polarization the plane at right angle to vibe to the plane of vibration is called the plane of polarization now if you understood what is plane of polarization which component of light will be there in the plane of polarization like in the plane of vibration the vertical component if the plane of polarization is vertical the vertical component of light will be there in the plane of polarization so in the plane of vibration so which component of light will be there in plane of polarization there will be no component because if it is a plane polarized light there will be no 
a plane polarized light will have vibrations only in one plane and if I twist the plane or change the plane there will be no other component in any other plane so there will be no component of light in your plane of polarization right now due to this guys if you look at ordinary light guys if you look at ordinary light it is symmetrical right it's you can have it has radial symmetry I could you know take a symmetry from any side and I would have same but once light becomes polarized it loses its symmetry right so I can say that uh, the incident light loses its symmetry in the polarized light Fine, do we get this thing here? So do we understand this? <coughs> now let's look at this diagram once again people. Ordinary light. Right? This particular slit is going to convert ordinary light into a plain polarized light. That means it is going to buffer out or it is going to remove the vibrations in all directions and keep vibrations only in a particular direction. This particular slit is going to make sure that if vibrations are in, that means if this vibrations are in a particular direction only, then they will pass through, otherwise they will not pass through. Right? The first slit which allows me to convert an ordinary light into a plain polarized light is called as a polarizer. Right? What does a polarizer do? A polarizer is the one which would, you know, uh, convert an ordinary light into a plane polarized light. But a plane polarized light is not, uh, it is not possible to distinguish it using naked eyes. So in that case, you have another slit that you are using such that if it is plane polarized, there will be no component of light coming out through it because I have twisted the plane of polarization. This is the second slit is called as an analyzer. The first slit is called as a polarizer and the second slit is called as an analyzer. Fine, do we get this thing here? What does an analyzer do? It helps you to distinguish whether a given light is an ordinary light or a plain polarized light. Because in the case of an analyzer, you are going to keep the slit, you are going to keep your plane of vibration different to the one which is there in the polarizer. If your plane of vibration is at right angles, if your plane of vibration of the analyzer is at right angles to that of the polarizer, I should have no light component coming out. There will be no light component coming out, right? Because vibrations existed only in a particular plane. Since I am not trying to put the vibrations on another plane, all the amplitude will be buffered out and there will be no light coming out from here. And this until both the slits were in the same direction, had, the, had both the slits been in the same direction, the entire amplitude would have come out. Since in the case of analyzer, I have kept the slit at right angle to that of the polarizer, the width of the slit is very small, so the entire amplitude is going to get buffered out. What will come out on the other side? Nothing. Right? So thus, an analyzer enables me to find out whether a given light is an ordinary light or a plane polarized light. Fine, do we get the same thing? Now, so do we understand the concept of polarization? Now, let's see another concept, guys. There was a scientist by the name Malus. In 1809, he came up with this concept that uh, when ordinary light is reflected from a surface, um, it becomes partially or completely plane polarized. If I have reflection taking place, right? In that case, ordinary light when it is reflected, this is your reflection taking place. 
when it is reflected or it is refracted then it gets partially or when you have a ray of light which is reflected from a surface of glass or water the reflected light becomes partially or completely plane polarized fine do we get this thing clear the extent to which it is going to get polarized will depend upon the angle of incidence the extent to which a ray of light would get polarized when it is incident on a surface would depend upon would depend upon your angle of incidence fine do we get this thing clear now Suppose let's consider this diagram. Let's assume I have a glass slab. This is my normal. Okay. This is my angle of incidence, which is ordinary light. Now, guys, how will I show ordinary light? Symbolically, ordinary light is represented with with a dot. and arrow on two sides this is how you represent ordinary light so this is ordinary light right you have ordinary light which is incident on a surface so let's assume that po is my ordinary light right now Certain part of the light is going to get reflected. Certain part of the light is going to get refracted. Right? Now, uh, the ray P O gets partially reflected and partially refracted. Right? Now, the components which are parallel to the plane of incidence uh, are represented as double arrow and they are called as the pi component. There are two components of light. One which will be parallel. See, light. If it is ordinary light, it is going to be vibrating in all the planes. Out of that, there will be one particular component which will be parallel to the plane of incidence. Ray of light is moving this way, right? I'm going to have this is my plane of incidence, right? There will be a particular component which will be parallel to the plane of incidence, right? That particular component is called as the pi component, right? in the case of incidence incident light since you have incident light which is vibrating in all the plane out of those all the planes in which it is vibrating there will be one plane which will be parallel to the plane of incidence right and there will be another component in that light which will be perpendicular to the plane of incidence i have ordinary light guys this is ordinary light it is vibrating in all the planes right it is vibrating in all the planes so in that case out of these planes if it is moving at say let us assume that it is moving in this particular angle so this particular plane is going to be parallel to the plane of incidence and this particular line is going to be perpendicular to the plane of incidence the line the plane which is parallel the vibrations which are parallel to the plane of incidence are called as the pi component and the ones which are perpendicular to the plane of incidence are called as the sigma components okay now experimentally it has been found out that both the reflected and the refracted rays uh, contain partially polarized light okay now the sigma components always remain parallel to the refracting surface since they were initially uh, perpendicular they are going to be parallel to the refracting surface if they are if they are perpendicular to the plane of incidence that means they are sorry ha ah, if they are perpendicular to the plane of incidence that means they will be parallel to the uh, plane of refracting surface right now when you have reflection taking place guys when you have reflection taking place same amount of both the components are there in the reflected and refracted light right now how much will that be will depend upon your refractive index how much of the light is going to get refracted right 
out of those two components, one component is perpendicular to the plane of incidence, therefore it is definitely going to get refracted, right? The sigma component is going to get refracted. Now let's come to the pi component. How much of the pi component is going to get refracted will depend upon the angle of incidence. How much? See, look at this. Parallel means pi component. Yeah, parallel means pi component. How much of the parallel component will pass through will depend upon the angle of incidence. If I change this angle, then I could have some rays coming here. If I change it more, I could have more rays coming here. Fine, do you get this thing clear? I already have a light which is in a particular plane. I'm, I'm now splitting the light into two planes. I'm considering one plane and this is the other plane. Out of that, one particular plane of light is definitely passing through. Now this is going to pass through depending upon what is my angle of incidence, right? If the angle of incidence changes, the amount of light that is going to get refracted will change. Now it has been found out experimentally that for a particular uh, angle of incidence, you would have 100% of pi components which are going to get refracted. For a particular angle of incidence, let's call that angle of incidence as theta p. For a particular angle of incidence, you will see that the 100% of pi components get refracted. 100% of pi components get refracted. That means I will have this, this is my polarized light. 100%, this is ordinary light, this is my polarized light without the dot. Okay, 100% of pi components get refracted. That is, at this angle of incidence, the, ref uh, the reflection coefficient of pi components is going to be zero, right? That means the reflected light is going to consist of only sigma components. The reflected light is going to consist of only sigma components. That's my reflected light, right? This particular angle at which the reflected light, light is plain polarized is called as polarizing angle. This particular angle of incidence at which the reflected light is plain polarized is called as the polarizing angle or it is also called as the Brewster's angle. Fine, do you get this thing clear? Now, let's, once we have understood that ray of light is going to get reflected, refracted, the reflected and the refracted light both will contain ordinary as well as plain polarized light and for a particular angle of incidence the reflected light is going to be totally plain polarized let's try to find out what that particular angle is right let's try to understand Brewster's law now Brewster, what did he discover? He discovered that when a ray of light is completely, uh, he discovered that when a ray of light is completely polarized by reflection, the reflected and the refracted rays are always at right angles to each other. Guys, for a particular angle, the reflected ray is going to be completely polarized. Now, in at that particular angle, he found out that the reflected ray and the refracted ray will be at right angles. That was what he discovered. Now we will experimentally prove that. Right? Brewster, he discovered that that uh, when a ray of light is completely polar polarized when a ray light is completely polarized when a ray of light is completely polarized by reflection the reflected ray and the refracted ray and the refracted ray 
are at right angles to each other. Right? So, thus, according to Brewster law, on the basis of that, he came up with the law that the refractive index of a medium is always equal to the tan of the polarizing angle. So, what is his law? Brewster's law is that the refractive index of the medium is equal to the tan of polarizing angle. Fine, do we get this thing here? That is what is his law. Now let's try to prove his law. Same diagram again. Glass lamp. Normal to the surface. Ray of light is incident. Angle of incidence. It gets reflected and refracted. A ray of light which is incident on the glass surface is going to get reflected as well as refracted. Right? Let's assume that PO is my ray of light, incident ray of light. It gets reflected in the direction of say POQ and it gets refracted in the direction of say OR. Right? Now, we know that angle of incidence is equal to angle of ref reflection. That means these two angles are same. Let's assume that this angle is theta p. So this angle will also be theta p. Here you have air. Right? This is ordinary light. Right? Now, the refracted light is going to cons uh, is going to contain only the pi components. Pi components that is it is going to consider uh, con it is only going to contain the components which are parallel to the plane of incidence. So it is going to have only pi components. This is my reflected refracted light. And the reflected light is going to consider or contain only the sigma components that is the components which are perpendicular to the plane of incidence right so let's write this down consider and your mn is your normal right consider ray po of unpolarized light. Right? Incident at O. Incident at O. Right? On surface XY. This is my surface XY separating the two medium. On surface x, y separating the two mediums. Fine, we get the same thing. Now, let's assume that the angle of incidence is equal to the polarizing angle. Let angle of incidence equal to the polarizing angle. Fine. What is the polarizing angle at which the reflected <coughs> ray is plane polarized is called as a polarizing angle. Right? I'll just write that down in a different thing to explain to you what is a polarizing angle. Angle of incidence at which the reflected ray at which the reflected ray The angle of incidence at which the reflected ray is plane polarized. That is called as my 
polarizing angle, right? So let's assume that my angle of incidence is equal to my polarizing angle, right? Now, OQ is your reflected ray, which is completely plane polarized. Therefore, I can say that OQ is reflected ray, which is completely plane polarized. Right? Now, MN is the normal. In which case I can say that angle of incidence I is going to be equal to theta p, right? Then experimentally experimentally uh, it has been observed that for polarizing angle angle QOR should be equal to 90 degree. At polarizing angle, the reflected ray and the refracted ray are at right angles to each other. Right? Now, I can also say that angle ROM is equal to the refracted angle. Now, guys, can you see the diagram? I can say that angle theta p plus angle qor plus angle ron should be equal to 180 degree angles in a linear pair right now therefore i can say that theta p theta p plus qor is 90 plus ron is r is 180 degree therefore i can say that theta p is 90 theta p plus r is equal to 90 in which case I can say r is 90 minus theta p right now by Snell's law refractive index is nothing but sin i upon sin r Angle of incidence is theta p. Angle of refraction you just found out is 90 minus theta p. Right? So therefore I can say sin theta p. Now sin 90 minus theta is nothing but cos theta cos quadrant. Sin upon cos is nothing but tan theta. So thus the refractive index of a medium is nothing but the tan of your polarizing angle right do we understand this so i could say that polarizing angle the angle of incidence in which at which when the ordinary unpolarized light is incident on a transparent refracting medium the reflected light has maximum rich is maximum rich in plane polarized light that is your polarizing angle i'll write that again once again so what is polarizing angle because the whole thing is based refractive index is tan of polarizing angle so you should know what is polarizing angle polarizing angle is the angle of incidence <coughs> at which <coughs> at which when ordinary unpolarized light when ordinary Unpolarized light is incident on a transparent medium transparent refracting medium The reflected light, the reflected light becomes 
maximum rich in plain polarized light. Right? So it is that angle of incidence which will give you a reflected light which is totally plain polarized. Right? Okay. We will stop this here for the day. Thank you very much.